Have you ever gotten paid and wondered where the heck has my money gone to or how the heck am I getting paid this much but I'm only seeing this much amount of money left for me to actually enjoy. And well, you're not alone because I have been in that same situation. And if there was ever a video or a topic that I wish they would have taught us in schools, it would be this one right here. Now, before we jump into the five steps of what you should be doing with your paycheck every time you get paid, I will first wanna break down the common mistakes that people tend to make with their money whenever they first do get paid. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that people tend to make whenever they get paid and they mismanage their funds is, well, they're simply not reevaluating and looking at how they've spent their money in the previous months. Have you been spending a little bit too much money on going out on the weekends? Have you maybe been overpaying for your insurance? Maybe there's parts of the insurance plan that you no longer need that you are still possibly paying. Well, is it possible that you are maybe living in an apartment that you thought you needed all the bells and whistles for and now that you're reevaluating your statements you're reevaluating your lifestyle you're starting to figure out hmm maybe i don't need that extra den or maybe i don't need this extra pantry space that's you know charging me an extra 200 bucks a month just to have that additional door inside of my living space and not to mention being that humans are creatures of habit well we tend to reward ourselves a little too quickly and splurge on things that we don't necessarily need to impress people that we don't necessarily like or that don't necessarily like us i mean let's be honest here at one point or another we've all tried to keep up with the joneses or we've all tried to purchase the newest gizmos and gadgets for us to stay up to date with fashion and with technology the moment that you realize that you could be rewarding yourself a little too much or a little too frequently with non-essential items is the moment that you realize that well i'm spending a little bit too much money that i could be saving and putting back into my pocket oftentimes whenever we reward ourselves a little too prematurely or with a little bit too much something gets penalized and something gets hurt expenses like our rent our mortgage our car payments if we have credit cards that we're trying to maybe improve our credit score all end up taking the back seat and that's all thanks to the way that we mishandle our money and that leads us into the fourth common mistake that people tend to make when handling money and that's well mishandling money that's right sticking to a budget or rather not sticking to a budget is one of the best ways for you to start losing money and not know where it's headed and not have a target for what you want to accomplish with the funds that you are saving and the extra money that you have left over every single month so now that we've taken inventory of what not to do whenever we get paid and the common mistakes that people tend to make with their money whenever they receive a paycheck Let's now switch gears over to the five steps of what you should be doing every time you get paid and how you could be putting more money in your pocket and setting yourself up for financial freedom. And so let's kick it off with the first one and that's this. Learn how to pay yourself first. You know, that's probably foreign to you if you don't own a business or if you've never maybe worked for yourself, but even if you work for someone else or even if you are an employee, learn how to pay yourself first. I, I remember watching Shark Tank and I would always listen to the sharks talk to these entrepreneurs when they would come in and they would always ask them, okay, apart from how much the business is making, how much are you paying yourself? And I always thought, well, isn't that the same thing? And then I started realizing, well, it's not the same thing. You see, whatever your business makes and whatever you get paid are two totally different things. Now, if you are an employee, how does this make sense to you? Well, have you ever had a paycheck and then you all of a sudden pay your bills, you go out on the weekend and you spend all this money and then you realize, well, I never really spent any of the money for what I wanted or for what I needed. Well, a simple answer for that is you just flat out didn't pay yourself first. This means that the cable company had their hands out, they got paid, rent, they had their hand out, they got paid, maybe transportation, they had their hand out, they got paid, but you personally, when you went to go look back at how much you were paid for your paycheck, you never saw, well, this is how much money I had left over for me to invest, or this is what I really wanted to do with my money, but I couldn't because I didn't have any additional funds left over. Now, one of the fastest ways for you to pay yourself first is by automating each paycheck. Now, the easiest way that you can do this is you can go to your bank or a local teller and let them know, hey, look, let's say I get paid $1,000 every paycheck. I want to open up a separate account and I want 5% of that to go to this different account right here. This way, if you've ever heard the saying of out of sight, out of mind, well, yeah, it's kind of like if you never had it, then you can never miss it. Think of it like that. And so every time you look at your checking account, you see that it now says, let's say 950 bucks opposed to a thousand. That's because $50 have already been set aside for you to pay yourself 
in a separate account. Now, if you've never done this before, I recommend starting with 5%, but you eventually want to build up to as high as 20% or more for paying yourself. Now, the next thing you want to do is maximize each paycheck. And this may seem like it's something that everyone does, but believe me, even though it's common sense, doesn't necessarily mean that practicality wins the fight. Make sure to fill up your gas tank, do all of your grocery shopping, and purchase all of your essential items the day you get paid or as close as you can on the day that you get paid that lasts until your following pay period. Pay all of your recurring debt and your large payments as soon as you get that paycheck. Things like your rent, things like your student loans, or if you have any type of outstanding balances that you want to chip away at certain debts. I myself used to fall into this trap of seeing this excess funds of, okay, let me just put $5 into my gas tank and let me just buy enough food for the weekend. And then I'm waiting until my next pay period, whether it's a month away or two weeks away, or if you're in commission, then you know exactly what that feels like. And then all of a sudden you see an extra 800, 900 bucks in your account. And you're saying, well, I, I can have fun subconsciously, right? You spent 20 here, you spend 30 there. And then you forgot that you had a bill that, well, you needed to pay. And so now you're digging into your savings or even worse, you're having to take out a cash advance loan, which in the long run you have to pay back. So it's just really more debt for something that could be cured with either automating all of your bills and having it auto pay and auto saved into your accounts or just paying it manually as soon as you can once you get paid. Now the third step is take a look at your tax withholdings on your paychecks. Now this isn't something that you have to look at every paycheck like you would with the first two that I gave you, but this is definitely something that if you haven't done so already, you want to take a look at as soon as you get your next paycheck if you haven't done so. You see, everyone loves a big tax refund. I get it, you get a big smile on your face, you're getting a couple grand, getting a couple hundred bucks, but what many fail to realize is that a tax refund is simply a interest-free loan that you've given the government by overpaying in taxes throughout your working year. Whenever you have too much tax withholdings, it's another way of you giving the government an interest-free loan for money that you could be using throughout the year. Now, I'm not giving you legal tax advice or telling you what you should be doing with each of your paychecks, but look, if you want to have more money in all of your paychecks so that you can have more money spread throughout the year, then take a look at how many allowances you are allowing to be taken away each paycheck. Now, one last thing about this is you do want to check your threshold for how much taxes you pay at the end of each year because the last thing you want to do is put too many allowances on your paycheck and then when you have to go to file your taxes in the following year, well, you have to pay a good amount of that money back. So I would recommend for you to visit your local CPA or whoever does your taxes. And I wanna thank our friends and sponsors over at Amazon's Audible. They've made it super easy and convenient for anyone who watches this video to enjoy not only a free month, but a free audiobook of your choice by hitting the link in the description. And don't forget that we have the courses down there where you guys can learn how to create your own YouTube channel and grow it from zero to a thousand subscribers and beyond and learn how to monetize it and maybe create a side income out of this. You can find the coupon code down below. Now the fourth step here of what you must do every time you get paid is one that I've done myself and I can't tell you how many headaches this has helped clear in my own household and that's, well, the envelope system. Now, if you're not familiar with what the envelope system is, I have to tell you it's super simple yet very effective. In a nutshell, here's how this works. You'll take an envelope, let's say you want to have extra money for the holidays, you want to plan for a vacation, and you want to have enough money for, let's say, if you like to hang out on the weekends at the end of the month. You're gonna create three different envelopes, one for each of those. And every time you get paid, you're going to set a separate fund for that, so let's say every paycheck, you're gonna set aside $30 per envelope. Obviously, if it's a vacation fund, then you're gonna be saving up a little bit more, and then if it's just to hang out on the weekends, you can maybe do it with 40, 50 bucks, right? Depending on how much or how, how much you wanna go out. The reason why the envelope system is so effective is because, well, <laughs> if there's no money in your envelope, then there is no going out. If there's no money in your envelope, then that means that you have to find the discipline of saving more money or picking up some type of secondary income or side hustle for you to stash up that separate savings account, which we know to be at this point an envelope. So if you haven't tried this before, I highly recommend it because it's pretty fun watching your envelope stash kind of grow before your very eyes. It's kind of like an adult piggy bank, if I can put it into any type of different words. Now the fifth and final step of what you must do every time you get paid is learn to reallocate 
your funds. If you are one of the select few, and when I say, say select few, I don't mean it in terms of that you're luckier than anyone else, but let's say you have a, a good paying job and you've been able to maybe work your way, work your debt down into a place where you have some extra money left over, reallocating your funds should be your biggest priority. Because like we mentioned earlier, whenever we have excess money left over, we have the temptation of buying a new bag. We have the temptation of maybe wanting to get into a new car that we don't necessarily need. There's always new gizmos and gadgets and technology that, well, we can always get our hands on, but is it technically the most beneficial approach that we should be taking with our money? Have you opened up a Roth IRA? How much money have you saved up to maybe purchase your first home? If you've already purchased a home, have you purchased any stocks, any index funds, any mutual funds that again, you're saving for your retirement? With your emergency funds, do you have two months saved up? Do you have four months saved up? These are all questions that you can be asking yourself. And then this way you can say, okay, I'm a little bit weaker in this area. So let me start giving my money the assignment of entering here and replenishing this account. Maybe apart from having the envelope system in place, you wanna take it a step further. Perhaps you wanna start saving money for to put your kids through college, or there's a couple of birthdays coming up, whether it's for your, for your parents or for a spouse or for your kids, and you're apart from having, again, that envelope system, you wanna have its own account. You can open an account and reallocate those funds into those accounts for future holidays, future expenses. If you know that you are going to have to come up with some additional funding for maybe a bill that you missed out on, maybe you took mortgage forbearance, and now they're asking for maybe a lump sum or at least two months, these are all funds that you can, again, allocate to so that in the future, when they do come, they don't hit you from surprise or by surprise because you've been fiscally responsible with the finances that you have left over. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Those are five simple steps that you can take every time you get paid and every time you get a paycheck in your hand so that way you're not scratching your head every single week or every month wondering where the heck did my money go? If you guys haven't done so already, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. If you found value in this content and joined the official community, tap that like button because it lets YouTube know that this is information and content worth sharing with other people and hit that notification bell so they can be notified every time we have content like this each and every single week. And if you want to check out more content similar to this, I have a podcast channel that's called Inside with Irv. So anytime that I am not posting on here, I am posting over there. I will link it down below as well. Once again, my name is Irvin Pena, also known as Irv Official. Until next time, everyone, we'll see you.